Hi guys, welcome back to LR Live and in today's episode we are going to do something that I've been waiting to do for this 110 Defender for some time and that is fit our raised air intake. So let's get into it. Now if you've been following the progress of our Project 110 you've probably got an idea now of the design direction that we're going in. So we are sort of keeping it fairly traditional, fairly original, and we're going for sort of like an overland safari look at the moment. Now, I'm sure that'll change in the future. We'll try a few different looks, but that's what we're going for right now. And because of that, it's sort of leading us towards the kind of snorkel we're fitting. Now, if you haven't seen our previous video about what snorkel to fit to your Land Rover, um, do check the video up there and you'll see the differences that are available that um, we've had a look at. So for this particular build, what I've decided to go for is the Mantec mushroom top. Um, I could have gone for the plastic jobby, which has got a little bit more of a modern look to it with the sort of uh, the horseshoe uh, top, but I like the original style. It was the first snorkel that really, or raised air intake that ever really came out. Um, it was the one that the military used, and I think it would really fit the profile of this vehicle really well. Now, the fitting of it is actually very similar to the other uh, Mantec snorkels and raised air intakes that are available, and really a lot of the raised air intakes that are on the market, they're all sort of fitted in a similar way. But I'm going to go through the whole process of how to do it, how to do it well, um, and that will give you a bit of an insight as to whether or not you'd like to take this job on yourself. Believe me, it's an easy job and it makes a massive difference to the look of the vehicle and it really does improve things if you go wading or if you're driving through sort of dirty, dusty air. Now, uh, as I said before, if you check out the video we did before talking about the differences between raised air intakes and snorkels and looking at a load of different models from different brands, um, you'll notice that we uh, suggest if you're going to use it as a snorkel, you need to weatherproof it and watertight it. Now, that's not something we're doing today, but it is something we're going to do in the future, but I want to save that whole water proofing your Defender for wading video for a couple of other things such as you know extended breathers and you know wading blankets and everything else but we'll get to that another day but for now let's get started on fitting this raised air intake. So what have we got in the kit? So it's all plastic apart from this stainless mounting bracket which is nice. Um, you've got the main raised uh, tube that sits along the uh, A pillar um, on the vehicle itself. You've got this mounts to the wing side You've got this flexi hose that connects these two, and then you've got the mushroom top, which has got the, uh, the fins in there in uh, stainless, uh, and that will go on the top. You don't need too much in the way of tools. You just need an um, Allen key, five mil, five and a half mil drill bit, 10 mil spanner, socket, that sort of thing. But generally, it's a very easy thing to fit. This is the correct mounting point for the wing on a TD5 and a 300 TDI, but you can still buy the one for a 200 TDI, uh, which is just shown here, and for an earlier turbo vehicle. So if you've got something which has got a, a swapped engine or you've got an earlier 200 TDI, they're becoming rarer and rarer now, but to be fair, there are still some out there. So if you wanted to fit this particular raised air intake, um, you can do, you just need to use the different piece. So it's a different kit, but they are available. So the first thing we need to do is actually remove this side panel. Now, I don't know if you can see on the camera there but it's actually been glued in place or there is yeah there's some there's some pretty strong glue around so this has been off before now I'd normally use a plastic tool to remove this but I haven't got one today so I'm hoping there we go that's just gonna pull off there now there is a chance it's going to rain today but I wanted to be outside because we've been stuck in the warehouse really for the last few videos uh, and it's been quite hard work and the light's not great. So until we hit 100,000 subscribers they're not going to get me a workshop. So if you wouldn't mind subscribing <laughs> that'd be amazing because then we could do all of this on a ramp and have everything sorted. So yeah let's aim for that shall we guys. So if you haven't subscribed please do so for my sake. Right that's nice and clean. Now, because we're fitting the raised air intake bottom piece through this hole, it's actually got, um, if you like, a, a location piece that sits inside the hole. Uh, we actually have to remove this bits of plastic, and I think it's easier to do while it's on the vehicle. Let's do the bottom one. So I'm making sure I've got a very sharp knife, otherwise this would be a lot harder. And it's catching them all, that's really good. Okay, so, how's that one? So it's actually loose in here now, so we just want to pop these out. 
which we can do very easily. This one's a bit tricky. There we go. So we've taken five of those out, but it only actually wants us to put four of these retaining clips in. Now, again, another reason why you might want to do this with this piece removed is in case I drop one and it's disappeared forever. Let's find out. Let's do this so you don't make the same mistake, just in case. So we put one here. There we go. And they are. Yep, that's one. So in the instructions, it's asking us to fit three longer bolts here and one shorter one here. And that is because the depth of this plastic housing internally isn't deep enough to fit a longer screw. So here we have, we've got our clips in place now as well. And obviously you've got the retaining part of the clip inside. Clips are in place. I've just put a little bit of super glue on the outside of this, just like four little dots, just to hold this gasket in place while I put it back into the hole. I've got the pipe connected from this uh, retainer onto the connecting piece of the pipe that goes to the airbox. That's all in position. These do pretty much line up. So now we need to do the same thing with this other gasket on our lower piece of our air intake. So everything's offered up. I've made sure that the internal pipe was connected. I'm going to use this spike just to try and make sure that it's lined up. Oh, That's tricky. Where are we? Pull it off. Okay, so I've got my spike in place now. So you can just see here that the third bolt is a little bit shorter and that's shorter because if we go up again to this inside, there's not enough room for a long bolt to go in here. So you have to use the short one. Does not want to go in there. So you can see what's happened. It's pushing the clip open. This is the one that's opened up and this is how it should be. just isn't going to take. Right, that clip was just not having it, so I've uh, contacted LR Parts and they've sent me out a new one. Once again, gasket in place, bolt in place, gasket both sides. That's in place. This should quite simply do up. Oh, so close. Yay! Right, we're in business. That first one has gone on. So I'm just praying now that the rest will line up. Something's happening. I think that's gone in. Yes! It's taken. Oh God, please let the fourth one go in. <sighs> Yay! Let's get that tight before it changes its mind. So what we've done is, as per the instructions, we've measured at 145, 245 and 345 from the bottom of the windscreen frame here, uh, just above the gasket. It's pretty easy to do because you literally just hang your tab of your tape measure there and just measure up. So that's nice and easy, but do make sure you have the bracket the right way around. So you'll notice that there's three holes in line there and on the other side, there's three holes, but the middle one, the center one is slightly closer to the center of this. And that's to match the actual snorkel tube. So make sure you get it on right. So basically before you do anything, you need to offer this up and make sure that's in place, which it is. So I'm just gonna make those holes a little bit more obvious, like that. If you've got a center punch, uh, I'd definitely recommend using it on this aluminium. It's not too bad, so as long as we go in gently, it should take pretty quick. Now, don't forget, we are fitting a stainless bracket, so you shouldn't get that corrosion issue uh, between the two, but you could, if you wanted to, use a piece of gasket or a piece of uh, bicycle inner tube just to lay on there and that wouldn't really do any harm to allow you to fit that. So let's just make sure this lines up. There you are. So that all lines up now. So we'll get that in position. So we've got our self-tapping bolts here. 
So I've got the bracket mounted now. I've hand tightened these uh, self tappers in. I haven't gone mad with them because obviously you don't want to round it off inside the soft aluminium, but that, that's loads of purchase on there. That's not going anywhere. Um, I've got my pipe into my flexi tube. Obviously the bend goes at the top to make it a right angle. And these holes here uh, on the actual housing are quite tight. So you're gonna need something to, they're almost like a self tapper. They're not quite a self tapper, but you're gonna have to try and hold everything together as you go through them. There we go. Uh, on the back, we've got some larger washers and we've got some nylocks. So we'll get those on now and button everything up. Okay, so it's looking good. We've got a nice little Mantec logo on the side here, which looks good. And there's one on the other side as well. Um, do you get these finishing caps, which make the job look a lot neater? And now we're just ready to put the uh, snorkel mushroom top on. So the last thing we've got to do now is just pop these rivets in here. Now, unfortunately, I've left my rivet gun at home. So for now, we're going to keep those to one side. And I'm just going to use a couple of tech screws. Won't affect the hole. There we go. So apologies for the tech screws clearly ruining everything. So all I've done here is I've just popped this cowl on the top. Um, you have to line these two slots either side, left and right, and then just drill a hole through there. To be fair, if you haven't got a rivet gun, I thought I had mine, that's why I've drilled the holes that size in a five and a half mil. But if you haven't got one of those, it's just plastic, so you could use a uh, self-tapper. That'd be quite easy and just as good. It just wouldn't secure it as well as a um, a rivet would do from theft, you know, because obviously someone's just got to undo it, but if it's a rivet, it's harder to nick. So everything's looking really neat. Sits nicely alongside the new windscreen rubber we fitted the other day. And if any of you are interested, it poured with rain last night and this morning. And look, we have a completely dry footwell. So I think we have single-handedly solved our leaking problem, but we will keep you up to date with that. Guys, looks like we were lucky with the weather and I managed to do this job outside. It literally only took about an hour to do and that was really extended because I had some trouble with those J-clips. Now I'm going to have a chat with the guys at Mantec and see if they could think about possibly improving the uh, the strength of those J-clips, going through something a bit more heavy duty so they don't give when you're actually assembling it. Because, you know, you've got a lot of elements involved there. Sandwiching those two gaskets and the two pieces of plastic, you know, with the wing in the middle is quite uh, an effort. So everything needs to be as easy as possible. So that was the only thing that I struggled with a little bit, but everything else, super solid, super well made, looks really good, it looks the part, I think you'll agree, it's sort of the right genre for the vehicle. Um, it's gonna probably improve our wading capability later on when we get it all plumbed in. But for now, we're gonna be the guys sucking the clean air in if we're on a convoy. Uh, so yeah, really pleased. If you like what you saw, please do give me a thumbs up and subscribe. Remember what I said, if I get 100,000 subscribers, there's a good chance we'll get our own workshop. So that would be amazing. So please do subscribe and uh, I'll catch you on the next one.